Hey guys, sorry I'm not coming to you in front of a camera today. It turns out I don't have my memory card for it with me at the moment, but I still wanted to get this video out for you guys, so I hope you don't mind the slight deviation from my normal episode review videos. But with that out of the way, let's get cracking on that latest episode. So episode 8, The Mountain and the Viper. I think this episode had a lot of problems, but I'll start out on a positive note with what I thought they did extremely well. The selling point of this episode, which was of course the fight between Oberyn and Sir Gregor, did not disappoint. The Elliot Bowl 2004, as I saw some of you guys calling it on Facebook, was well choreographed, dramatic, and fast-paced. And to top it off, it ended perfectly on a gruesome and upsetting note. I kind of had a feeling that they were going to go all out with the gore on this one, just because they haven't been pulling any punches so far with this season. My only complaint was that them getting armored up and prepared for the fight wasn't stretched out a little more. I just wanted to see a touch more build-up, but other than that, this might be one of the best scenes this show has ever done. However, I don't think I would call this one of the best episodes ever. Let's get the worst thing out of the way first. The relationship between Grey Worm and Missandei. It was something that took up a pretty sizable chunk of the episode, and it just felt so fillery. And like I said in a previous review, this would be fine, but not for the fact that we have like 800 other characters that need the attention and development way more than these two do. This is going to sound extremely mean, but this felt like a deleted scene. But the difference is that they left it in the episode instead of putting it as a DVD extra. It detracted so much from what was really happening, which was Daenerys banishing Jorah for being a spy. This is something that really should have been drawn out a bit more too, since it's the biggest turning point for her story this season. It would have been nice to have a scene with her alone when all eyes were off of her, and seeing what she really felt finding out this news. Would she cry? Would she frantically punch a wall in anger and confusion about her most trusted friend betraying her? I wanted more than anything to see a reaction from her before we got rushed off to the next scene. And yet again, I can say the exact same for Theon and Ramsay's scenes. Alfie Allen as Theon nailed it again when he had to sell out the other Iron Islanders, but the entire thing just felt like it flew by in a series of jump cuts. I'm really not sure what was going on with the wildlings in this episode. They've been running through small towns and villages in the north and burning them down for no reason. It would be one thing if we saw them stealing something, but they seem to just stick around long enough to stab people and torch buildings. They need to be given more of a motive than just being jerks, or they stop becoming characters and just become a force of conflict for the Night's Watch. Although speaking of which, it was nice to see Dolorous Ed actually get a decent amount of lines for once. It makes me really look forward to next week. When it came to Sansa at the Eyrie, I didn't mind the plot changes and loved Sophie Turner as Sansa in these scenes, but it felt like she made the switch from pawn to player a little too fast here. Her story is a slow burner with her gradually making this change, but it felt like they had dropped the nice buildup they had going and are now pushing her right into the end zone. But like I said, Sophie Turner's performance here really kept it all together, and it was nice to see some politics of the veil. Tyrion and Jaime have another talk, and while yet again Peter Dinklage hits it out of the park, their dialogue about their cousin who liked to squish bugs was just bizarre. I get that it was a metaphor for some people just never needing a reason to do the things that they do, and sometimes there's just no changing them, but it felt tedious and I would rather have seen the two brothers just have a scene with little to no dialogue. It would be so cool to have two of the most smart-mouthed characters not know what to say for once when Tyrion's life is about to be decided. The two brothers are no doubt extremely nervous about the situation, but when you have a calm, cool, and collected talk about a cousin, it brings the intensity bar down when it should be pushing up to the max. If I could sum up this episode in just one word, I wouldn't call it bad, but I would call it imbalanced. There was long, drawn-out scenes focusing on the unimportant, and fast whirlwind scenes focusing on the dramatic and emotional. These scenes were good, HBO, but you need to slow down so that we have time to sink our teeth into what these characters are going through. Another thing I've realized is that over this last season, the episodes have really been packed wall to wall with dialogue. But when you think about it, some of the most memorable moments of the show have come from having no talking at all. Television is a visual medium, and I'd rather have things shown to me sometimes than always have it explained with words. I get that for a show like this, sometimes having things explained is important, but you have a fantastic set of actors. Sit back and let them get something across with nothing but the expressions on their face. The scene with the least amount of talking in this episode, The Trial by Combat, ends up being well worth the price of admission alone for this exact reason. With the last two episodes coming up and still a massive amount of important things to cover from the books, I just hope that they can find a way to balance all of the things that need to be given more time. I'm just worried that while a lot of these scenes are always being well done from a technical standpoint and outstandingly well from an acting standpoint, as they always are, they're falling victim to simple pacing and plotting issues in the writing. But I've really been anticipating seeing what you guys thought, so make sure you leave a comment telling me what it is that you did or didn't like about the episode. Also, please like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Make sure you check out the wonderful Ozzie Man reviews as well. He does fantastic and extremely funny Game of Thrones videos and I highly recommend him. And above all, he's just an extremely nice guy.
I know you guys will love him, so I'll put a link in the description to his channel. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Danzy, and I'll see you next time.